Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Sunshine. Sunshine is a fork of Moonlight which we will be use for using for game streaming. First things first, you're going to go over to Sunshine GitHub page and from here we're going to go to the release page and download the latest release. You're going to choose um, Sunshine Windows.exe. After you download that, like I have here, you just go to the setup here you're going to want to leave tools checked it will give you a few executables that will help you later on when you're going to configure the sunshine server okay now uh, sunshine will start after we click on finish and it will go to its first steps we have to wait a bit depending on your computer when you reach this part where you are given a link you're going to have to copy it because here is the setup page of uh, sunshine so you copy that you paste it ignore this you're going to configure yourself a username and password for the web GUI the web GUI will not be accessible online in the external um, internet, however you will need to use it every time you add a new client. So let me just enter my password, click login, now it's telling us to reload the page. Okay, now what we will have to do is configure the device that will be used by Sunshine for our audio and video um, input. For that we go to configuration. Here are a few of the settings that we can modify. However, we need, like I said, audio and video. Now here under audio sync, it's telling you that you need a path to a audio device and you can get this path for all your current audio devices by going here so this is not the complete path the complete path will be the install path of your sunshine client that if you haven't changed anything would be in the c drive program files and sunshine okay now we are here, uh, now being here, if you just copy and paste this, we will get the output that we need as such. Here you can see I have multiple devices. Now the important part here is, uh, for example, I have a USB audio DAC. If, for example, I know that I'm removing this often, I wouldn't want to use this device as if it's not present the sunshine uh, server will fail so in my case I will simply pick the onboard audio device and I will just pick this entire path right click it's copy go here right click and paste now the virtual sync you don't need uh, you can use that if you want your uh, PC to be muted while the sound is being streamed. I don't care about that and I think it's a bit advanced for our tutorial, tutorial anyway. Now next up is the adapter name. Here you will want to enter your GPU exact name. Of course there's a tool that will provide you with exactly that. Again copy, go back in your PowerShell and paste. As you can see, this is my device name. I'm just going to copy that. It's important that you copy the exact name, not something different, sorry. So under adapter name, paste. Now it's going to ask us for an output. The output being the display. If you have multiple displays and you want to output only the second one, not the first one, you should simply enter the display name. However, in my case, currently I only have one, so I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here. And nothing else is needed, we're just going to click on save. 
it's telling us to restart sunshine to apply changes now what i like to do additionally to what i've already done here um, is go to advanced and here um, I like to force a specific encoder. This is not really needed. However, um, since I already know that my GPU is an AMD, I'm just going to pick AMD, AMF, VCE. If you would have been uh, used uh, NVIDIA, you would just pick NVIDIA. The other one would be used if, for example, you would be having an integrated Intel GPU. Okay. So let's just click on AMD, scroll down, click again on save. Now, this whole restart sunshine to apply changes thing, uh, what's telling you is just go over to sunshine, close it, wait for it to close. Okay, now it's closed. If you will re uh, refresh the page, you will see it won't take us anywhere. Yep. Okay, now we are just going to restart it. So go back here, sunshine, and start the page. Uh, one thing that uh, is important, and I've did, I've done, I did this mistake uh, intentionally, is it's telling us to run the application as an administrator for optimal performance. Of course, we're going to do that. So we're closing it back down, waiting for it to be closed. Go again, sunshine, and run as administrator. Now, if you're getting this, it means that you have uh, configured it correctly, your devices are configured, and anything is okay. Don't take um, in consideration this UPnP device. This is a network thing that you currently do not need. Now, you should simply switch to the device which you want to use as a client. Let's say your mobile phone or your uh, tablet. In my case, it will be this MacBook that I'm using to record the installation. So I've already um, started Moonlight, as you can see. And uh, because I did this installation a few times, it's seeing a lot of clients. But if I would be to delete all of them, I will only get the current one. Yes. And yes. Okay, so now it's saying searching for PCs on your local network. And eventually it will uh, show me my PC. If not, um, you can always just enter the local IP of your computer. In my case, that's 192.168.100.54. And this is my PC. You see it has a little lock on it. It means it was never used and we will have to set it up using a pin. We are simply going to click on it and it's going to give us a pin. So 8547. We go back on our um, host, so on our gaming PC. We go back on our local host link where we are going to add this client. We are going to go here under pin and we are going to have to enter that uh, four digits number. In our case, eight, five, four, seven. Okay, it's saying success. Ignore that, go again. We have to do it a bit faster. Okay, and now the lock is gone and you are presented with your desktop. Uh, here, you're simply going to pick desktop. It works best in my opinion. However, before doing that, you can go here on the little cog wheel and these settings will going to have to edit them for your client PC, meaning for the, the, the best settings for the device you are streaming to, in my case, my MacBook. I'm going to leave this resolution at this frame rate and I'm going to want full screen. And let's just do, ooh, yeah, borderless window. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do that. Go back, click on desktop, 
and I am connected to Moonlight as you see and also here it says time connected now uh, right now I could simply start the game and play and do whatever I want however um, this is only the part so you, you're done right now if you only want to use your PC on uh, the local network on the LAN if you want to stream it uh, via the internet there are a few steps left so if we go over the setup page of Moonlight again Moonlight and Sunshine are basically uh, having the same configuration the only difference is the part where you are allowed to pick other GPUs when using Sunshine otherwise you're limited to Nvidia so for streaming over the internet what you have to do is port forward your um, ports what that means is your router when it receives requests from the internet it should know that they don't need to be dropped but they need to be forwarded to your gaming pc so for that uh, you will have to go over to your router and just add these ports and map them to your um, PC. I'm going to show you how mine look. However, for that I'm going to hide the page for a bit. so this is my router and I've logged in and I've gone to forward rules of course every router will be different uh, however the one that my ISP is providing me with looks like this and here um, I define three rules for my computer and I also call them sunshine you'll see I'm using the internal IP of my desktop and I've picked the ports that are specified over here you see you're getting a clear description of what you have to forward and this is exactly what I've done it's also telling you what should be TCP and UDP uh, of course some of them um, may be also TCP or UDP it doesn't really matter however in this case it's not the case uh, no, it is actually. So, as said, these are my rules. Of course, this will differ in your case. It will differ using the meaning the internal host. Good. Now, after you're done with this, basically what you've done is you're telling your router that if somebody else from the internet is trying to reach it using these ports, the one answering this call shouldn't be the router but your PC of course uh, now what you want to do is make sure that your uh, firewall is allowing you to do that for that you go to Windows Defender firewall if you have the default Windows Defender as your security tool and you go to inbound rules and here you're going to search for sunshine Okay. and here I have two rules basically what I'm telling it is that it should allow the connection for the sunshine executable UDP I specified which domains and I have another one here I'm going to allow TCP one is TCP, one is UDP, that's why there are two of them. Good. So now we covered what you have to do for your internet, meaning for your router, and what you have to do for your PC, meaning right now, if someone has your public IP, he will try to reach you. 
the router already knows that those ports should reach your PC and your PC already knows that those ports are allowed and it should answer them. However, in most cases, you're probably having a dynamic public IP. In that case, there are a few solutions which I'm not going to go too deep into because that's a whole other video and kind of a deep subject. However, what you can use is a dynamic uh, DNS service. A free one uh, that I recommend is DuckDNS. DuckDNS allows you to do just that. What it basically does is you create a free account and uh, you just uh, pick a name. Let's say it will be something like my gaming PC dot duckdns.org and when this will be um, pinged or you're going to try to reach it it will reply with your current dynamic IP of course um, how this works how it will always know it it's by um, having it installed on your PC as a service and at every startup it will simply update your current IP over your uh, link uh, that would be the part the last part of the internet issue now you should be able to simply use your uh, dynamic DNS name when reaching your device be it from outside or internally however like uh, you're seeing here you have this ugly icon which also you started manually and you will have to start manually every time you want to use it that's not really feasible so there's a solution for that and what the solution is we're going to close it is to create a service that will do just that meaning it will start the sunshine uh, client uh, service uh, hidden so in the background at every startup for that we'll have to go back to the github page sunshine you'll have to go back again and here uh, we have scripts sorry not scripts we're going to go back to sunshine and here we have uh, tools yeah tools was and here we have something called install.service.bat now to be honest I don't know exactly why this does not work for me however I know how to make it work the problem is line 4 um, here you will simply have to change this to the install path of sunshine so let's do this one by one so we select the whole text copy it we open notepad We paste it in here and like I said we have to um, change this TP0 which is usually current directory but we are not going to use it that way so that won't work to our install path in our case that was C program files sunshine you can get the direct link to this by typing PWD well, of course right now it doesn't work because I'm in uh, a bat not in PowerShell however we can just copy this okay right click that means copy we go back here select what we want to delete delete right click and paste now this is going to work but we have to save it as a dot bat a bat is a script that is uh, originally used by command prompt of course uh, that's not probably entirely true however that's how it's going to work so what you're going to have to do is go to file save as uh, you can just pick desktop and here change the save type from txt to all files and call it sunshine service dot bat and click save okay now if you're going to go on your desktop you're going to see your new bot file bat file which you can execute 
by double clicking on it but um, in order for you to be sure that it actually works you just go back to your PowerShell uh, go to your uh, desktop so users your name and desktop and here you're just going to want to copy this name in here in my case I'm just typing sunshine service I type uh, if you, you can use tab for auto completion so you type a bit from the name and then just press tab it will auto complete the name you press enter it says that sunshine service is not started it's checking if it's already been installed previously so it was not in my case this means that the service was created the service is starting and the service was started successfully now you would probably think but I don't see anything how do I know that my service is working well you can just try and access the web page the web GUI and see if you get a reply so let's go back here and refresh yep we get a reply and now we can try to reconnect using sunshine I'm going here I see the PC click on it click on desktop and it works and right now you're basically done you can reach your uh, computer and uh, everything should be fine uh, what should be taken into consideration is while you will be able to reach your PC immediately after you did this there are a few parts that I have not included because they're pretty uh, self-explanatory your PC should have a private um, static IP in my case it's 192.168.100.54 um, yeah, that's it.